Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's time for another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show with Rich Baxter and Gary Mack talking baseball. Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show. I'm Gary Mack. And Rich Baxter over here. Hey, how you doing, Gary? I'm doing good, Rich. How are you on this fine, sunny, I guess it's the uh, summer, though uh, we haven't hit that official calendar mark yet. Yeah, definitely feel like summer. A lot of the ballparks, they're celebrating Father's Day today. So excuse me if I feel like I'm, you know, in the moment with Father's Day today. Is it today or next? I think it's, it's next week. It's actually no? next week, but some of the ballparks are uh, celebrating uh, it today because the teams are on the road. The Phillies are uh, celebrating it at home. So I'm sort of in that holiday mood myself. Oh, okay. For okay. Well. In a row. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, why not? We deserve it, right? <laughs> why not? And yeah, uh, some of the ballparks are opening up. Uh, the Mets had 26,000 uh, plus there Friday night. It sounded like 100,000 people. I think uh, people wanted to get to back to the ballpark and really cheer. It was really exciting uh, just sitting at home and, and hearing the uh, – uh, the cheering and, and uh, you know, just all the noise again. It was really incredible compared to last year when, when you heard literally nothing but some canned, uh, canned cheers. How about the Phillies? Uh, are they opening them up more? Oh, yeah. The Phillies um, eclipsed that with 36,000 plus yesterday. Yeah. Almost 36,500 in the see the Yankees come to town. They wrap up the series today. Imagine they might have a, an equal amount of fans there because, uh, as you said, people have been Jones and they get back to the stadium. They want to go for that ball game. And uh, But, you know, I, I was thinking this morning as I was uh, thinking about that attendance with the way Canada and England are still closed down. They won't allow visitors into their countries from the U S somebody's got to be wrong here, Gary. We got 36,000 people in Philly, 26,000 in New York close one by one next to one another. Maybe our English friends could weigh in on this for us this week. Yeah, they, they, they must be doing something wrong over there because they've had some outbreaks after that. We did not have, uh, who knows? Maybe it's the, the vaccination is different i don't know uh but yeah they're having some problems over there and and as you said canada i don't know what the deal is with them uh the prime minister's traveling he's in england as a matter of fact now for the big g7 summit uh so he's leaving the country and uh it, it's causing a lot of havoc um toronto blue jays are playing in buffalo buffalo uh their farm team is playing in Trenton, I think. Um, it's just uh, it, it's crazy. Uh, the PGA tournament, uh, 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 this really would have been the weekend of the Canadian Open. They canceled that, and they're playing in South Carolina in an event. So, I, you know, it's just it's all topsy-turvy in the world of sports, and it, it's not going to help. I don't think it's, you know, um, well, they'll be looking long term, and they're not ready to expand yet. But um, you know, how does it affect Montreal getting a franchise when uh, uh, this sort of thing is going on? But that's that's down the road. So maybe by then, uh, Canada will open up. But uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy, Rich. Uh, 
as you said, other cities are opening up of the states and and these countries aren't doing the darn thing and we don't know what the heck. Yeah, what's going e on? Even France is fully open, so um I think you hit the nail on the head when you said they're not doing something right in those countries. Maybe they feel I don't know. I don't know how they feel. I just kind of weird is, is the best way to describe <laughs> it that's the way they seem sorry for that yeah it's uh and it's kind of crazy in a way when you think about it all but you know some I, of the, I guess go ahead i was just gonna say i don't feel that the pandemic is completely over because it's not i did read a, a story the other day We've had more deaths worldwide in the first six months of this year than we had all of 2020 all over the world. So obviously this pandemic is not over yet worldwide. Uh, yes, we've been knocking it down here in the States, but you know, it still exists. So if you're going out to these games and I'm going to meet in public, like these big, large gatherings, Eh, you might be wise to still protect yourself with a mask, socially distant. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I could see the value behind it. Uh, you know, putting the mask on, keeping it, you know. Uh, look, if you feel like taking it off to, to breathe, then, then go ahead and do that. But maybe, you know, if you got it on uh, for a little bit every hour, you're at the ballpark or something, it'll, it'll be a, some sort of deterrent, um, some sort of help. Though, I don't know, there are studies that say masks are no good anyway. They, in fact, they would hurt more than they help. So, who, you know, it's so confusing. And I think that's part of the problem as well. People are so confused about everything that uh, nobody knows what to do anymore. They told us masks were good or bad, and they told us we had to wear a mask. They're good. Uh, now the studies are, are somewhere in the middle. So I think that's what a problem with this uh, um, pandemic. And yep. it could be a problem with these countries. Yep, and that's going to lead us into our first story of the week here. Um after we did our show last Sunday, uh, Chicago Cubs, Anthony Rizzo waiting for, quote, more data on COVID-19 vaccine. Chicago Cubs first baseman Anthony Rizzo said he understands the controversy surrounding his decision not to get the COVID-19 vaccine, but explained that he is taking some more time to see the data in all of it. So, uh, uh not not too surprising there, but uh, the Cubs are supporting them. Well, and rightfully so. I mean, you know, uh, I don't think you should force anybody to take it if they don't want to. Uh, he's a cancer survivor. So, um, you know, it's it, it's it, it's almost like what happened in, in uh, my household. Uh, my wife's a cancer survivor and he uh, was leery about taking it as well. She checked with a number of doctors and I'm sure he's done the same. Or well, he wants to do more data. He wants to see more data. And uh, she decided to take it. Uh, but we don't know what's going to happen in the future with this thing. That is, they're finding... Uh, it was safe for kids, and now they're finding that it's not safe. For, there's, uh, let me. They are finding some heart problems with some uh, kids that take it from 16 to 24, I think. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's something you got to be real careful with, and and he doesn't want to screw himself up uh, for the future, so. He's not going to take it. And, and uh, the Cubbies are right to back him. You don't want to start getting against your players and then have divisions in the team. And, you know, it, it then it's not good. Yeah. Shortstop Javier Baez and Rizzo uh, got together and talked about it. Uh, Baez says, if you want to call it, quote, we argued about it. But at the end of the day, we 
respect each other. Uh, Rizzo didn't seem to mind when the Cubs had 100% full attendance the other day at the stadium where he launched a home run over the right field wall to tie the game in the sixth inning. The Cubs were trailing five to four. So Rizzo taking advantage of that big crowd, as you said, Gary, to get them into it. Even though he's not vaccinated, he smashed a home run over the right field wall. And, yeah, I mean, and the bottom line is it's his decision. So, uh, you know, we have to respect that. And we have to respect everybody's decision that doesn't agree uh, with the, uh, you know, the total uh, – Total vaccination of, of everybody. Not everybody's going to agree with that. And uh, I, I don't believe that you should force people to take the vaccine if they're against it. It's just my opinion. Um, and uh, we have to be careful of that, that we don't get to that point. That's true. I don't believe in the vaccination passports they've been talking about things like that mm -hmm. and different states don't either i think florida uh made it illegal for companies and uh organizations to demand a vaccination passport in air quotes um but we'll see how this progresses we're still in the month of june here counting down the days to the real father's day and um you had a story that happened towards the tail end of our last podcast uh, in the New York area. And I guess you got the whole deal on this story with Pete Alonzo. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're cracking down on uh, MLB wants to crack down or they're sending out a message that they're going to, and then they're going to, I think they're just uh, trying to scare the pitchers. So they're going to crack down on illegal substances and, um, Peter Alonzo is one that, uh, has got a different viewpoint on the whole thing, uh, on a couple of matters regarding the baseball. Uh, he, uh, ha thinks it's, it's, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a conspiracy theory, but he believes major league baseball, uh, the year that, uh, they, they fixed the ball, depending upon the free agent class or the majority of it. Uh, he gives for his in. For an example, he gives the year that uh, was it last year, two years ago, when all the pitches were up, uh, Bauer and all of those guys, and uh, who else? Uh, all the big, uh, Kershaw and everything. When they were coming up for free agency, uh, Major League Baseball, it's his, his belief, juiced the ball. So there'd be a lot of home runs and, and, it would keep the salaries down because the pitchers would not have, they wouldn't dominate. They wouldn't have low ERAs this year. There's a lot of short stops and a lot of hitters avail going to be available. Good, fine young stars and the ball is deader. Uh, so there's not a lot of offense. I don't know if I buy into his theory, uh, but, um, you know, it's his theory as far as that, but uh, they're going to, MLB says they're going to look into the uh, using um, the illegal substances. They want to crack down on that. And, you know, look, it, it just, uh, what it does show is that they don't know what's going on in, in the MLB. I mean, they cracked down on Houston for cheating. Um, and then we see this, you know, uh, maybe because of this, they've been doing illegal substances a long time longer than they've been cheating with video as far as we can tell. So it, it, it they should have went after the pitchers first and they probably would have never had the whole incident with Houston besmirched the game you know they wouldn't have had to done, do that if uh illegal substances wasn't being used but um the shame of it is is then everybody gets painted with a broad brush then then is it garrett cole is cheating is it jacob de is trevor bauer are they using illegal substances 
there was a whole big hoopla here in New York because somebody put a video of Jacob deGrom. I guess you can't fix your pants anymore in this world. Uh, he, he just, he, he went like this to, and pulled up his pants and they said, Oh, look, he, he, he's juicing up the ball or he's getting substance on his, uh, fingers or something. Check him then check him. Go ahead. <laughs> Everybody says he, he's not using anything. His ball does not take any odd ball, you know, movement drops. Yeah. Movement or anything like that. So, I don't know. I, 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 you know, all their, their pitches out there doing stuff. Of course there are. They've been doing it for ages. Whitey Ford and Hel Elston Howitt used to mock up. Elston Howitt used to sharpen his uh, uh, shin guard, the, uh, the part where it used to clip in, the old, the old shin guards. Um, and he would sharpen that. So when he got a, a pitch, from Whitey Ford, he could rub it against there, put a little cut in the ball because they didn't check the ball like they, they do now. You know, they didn't, the ball hits the dirt, they throw it out of play. They didn't do that in the old days. So some of them balls would be mocked up and, and scuffed up and all kinds of, and Gaylord Perry's in the Hall of Fame and he, he admitted to throwing a wet ball. Um, you know, I could go on, but, uh, you know, that's Pete. Pete's got a point of view and, and he's going to get it out there. And he says he's talked to other players and they all feel the same way. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm sure Aaron Nola's name got mentioned in, uh, this conversation as well. Yeah. And I don't think, like you said, Pete Alonzo wasn't really talking as much about as of the substances. He wasn't um, contesting that as much as he's contesting his theory that the MLB is doctoring the ball from the word go That's right. in an attempt to limit the offense for certain players, um, bring the game down a little bit, so to speak. Uh, I don't know. We've, we've heard this talk for the past couple of years. I don't know if it's for that reason, but it's obvious to me that the MLB wants to sort of control things to the max. And if there's more home runs flying out than there should be, that they're going to investigate it and perhaps change the ball. So, I mean, it, it, it's all part of a good conversation. Interestingly enough, though, New York Mets management did not agree with Alonzo's um, claim about the ball being manipulated for the um, benefit or, or non-benefit of the batters, the uh, free agents. So when is Alonzo a free agent anyway? Is it coming up soon? No, I think he's got a couple more years. He's only in his uh, third season. Okay. And uh, uh, he he came up uh, like in May or June of the first year. So I don't even think, I don't know how that counts. It counts towards the, uh, you know, free agency. His time, his, his time, but it doesn't count the, uh, he didn't get a full year, I don't believe. So I, I don't know. I think he's got a couple more years, but, uh, yeah, he's I just, got opinions. <laughs> I just looked it up. By the way, he's most similar in ages as his batting here uh, compared to Reese Hoskins, believe it or not, from the Phillies. So, you know, they both sort of share a similar career, a similar base that they play, first base. Mm -hmm. And uh, most similar by ages right now. Reese Hoskins, R Richie Sexton, if you remember him from the Chicago. Oh, League. yeah. But yeah, earliest free agent for Alonzo's 2025. So it's not like he's competing for that, you know, contract this year. But uh, of course, smacked 53 home runs his first season with the Mets, lit the world on fire 
with 120 RBIs. And of course, last season, I think you can throw that out the window. Um, you got a 40 game season or 60 game season, whatever it was last year, but it, it it's largely forgettable in my opinion. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you figure, uh, he roughly would have hit in the thirties last year at the pace. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so he's really not so, doing bad this year. 10 home runs already 31. Yeah. Ribs. Yeah. 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 He's on a good pace again. Um, I don't know if he'll hit 53 again. That's tough. Uh, and, and that ball was juiced. And, uh, you know, uh, that those two years, 18 and 19, that ball was juiced. And, uh, so, but I mean, if you look at the guy, he's a big guy, he's going to hit a lot of home runs. Uh, just, I don't know if he's going to hit 53. That's all <laughs> yeah. a lot of home runs, a lot of home runs and what? somebody that hit a home run, rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, but didn't get credit for it was third baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Cabrian Hayes, who returned from the 60 day injured list about a week ago. And uh, he was playing pretty well for the Pirates when he got hurt. And uh, he came back and had a good first inning. He shot a ball to the opposite field that barely cleared Clemente, Clemente Wall and was narrowly tucked inside the right field foul pole. It was in that initially ruled his third home run in his seventh game of the season. However, he was unsure if it was going to have the distance to coming at, you know, uh, coming out of the box. So he was, as he was sprinting up the first baseline, he uh, stepped around first base instead of on it. The Dodgers caught the mistake, and when Walker Bueller got set to face Brian Reynolds in the next at bat, he threw over to first baseman Max Muncy for the one three put out. He never stepped on first, didn't realize it, and lost a home run. Uh, you know, that's your responsibility. The video confirmed the out, and uh, he was the. Not credited then with a home run. Oddly enough, though, Rich, another prospect, a Kansas City prospect, then number seven prospect, Bobby Witt Jr., blasted a home run for Kansas City's AA affiliate, Northwest Arkansas, but the home plate umpire ruled he did not touch home plate. Bobby Witt, Witt Jr. thought he touched them all for his second homer of the game, but he didn't touch home. And this was even dumber, if I could say that, uh, because he has this little dance or, or slide or step that he does across home plate. And it and he, and he missed the home plate completely. <laughs> and he got called out for it. And if I was his manager, I would tell him, if you ever do that dance again, your ass is going to be on the bench for the next game. Um, it was just pure stupidity that, you know, he, he could have just ran across home play. He, you know, look, the other guy too, it's, it's a question of stupidity, but, you know, I can almost see it with him. He's watching the ball, hoping it goes out and everything, and then is not paying any attention. Uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of the old Mets story on the 62 Mets. Remember how bad they were. And, uh, Casey Stengel, uh, Marv Throneberry hit a ball to, I forget where it was deep right center field. We'll say, and, uh, ran around the bases and, and got a triple. And I forget what the team was, but they appealed and he got called out for missing uh, first base. So Casey Stangle comes running out to argue and he's, he's jumping up and down the umpire system. Casey, forget it. Calm down. He missed first and second base. So it didn't matter where they. (laughs) 
Where are they appealed? <laughs> yeah, he he missed them all. Uh, you know, so uh, that's that's a story. But you know, here's something you don't see every day. They missed the base and um, uh, two two prospects, one in the majors and one in the minors, but both of them missed the base, uh, missed a base after a home run. But really, the the uh, minor league one was really the one that first caught my attention. And uh, it's <laughs> when you watch it, it's so stupid. Yeah. Because the guy comes around, he's more interested in getting high fives and doing his stupid, whatever his slide step. I, I don't know what you'd even call it. Uh, I think the article said patented dance or something or other. Well, I would revoke the patent on that if I was his manager and the organization as well. So um, that's the, that's one of the, the, at least that's a happy story. Well, it's not happy for them, but it's a fun story for us. Yeah. They get so caught up in the moment. It's like they forget to uh, do what they're supposed to be doing. And right. uh, just a little minor detail <laughs> touching the base. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of that nowadays. They're all too busy with, with the bat toss or, or this, you know, or some hand gesture when, when they get a hit, you know, they all got to look in the dugout now and go, <laughs> whatever the hell they do. And, uh, you know, uh, they're going to step off a base to do something stupid like that. And they're going to get tagged out. And um, I wouldn't want to go into the dugout to face some of these managers. Uh, though, I don't know, some of these managers today, they're not like the old time managers. But could you imagine missing home plate or missing first base and then having to go in to face uh, uh, Dallas Green? No, <laughs> or 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 Bobby Valentine, or uh, um, uh, Whitey Herzog, or something. <laughs> I I don't think I'd want to do that. Not at all. Even <laughs> no, no, thank you. None of them. <laughs> yeah, it looked like the Pirates player was so into it that he was watching the home run and completely forgot about what he was doing. So uh, as you yeah. said. Kind of a bonehead move. Well, bonehead moves is not what you'll hear on our show, but you can go to our anchor.fm site over at anchor.fm forward slash baseball talk radio show. If you're watching our show on the YouTube channel, we appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button for us. We're trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. We're on our way. So we appreciate you guys checking in, watching the show. Leave us, um, Leave us a little comment if you'd like um, on our baseball podcast site here. You can even support us. The center button right here, if you're watching us on YouTube, is our support page. You just go right to it. It's a pop-up, uh, and it's very secure. So for up to $0.99 cents a month, as little as $0.99 cents or you want to be a big spender, you can go to $9.99 per month. And we'd appreciate your support for this show. And, um, of course, Gary does his Mets musings, and I do Phillies Talk podcast. So, you know, spread the love, so to speak. We need some more <laughs> equipment, what you see here, um, and some stuff to improve the show. And Gary's always improving the video show. He does things that, you know, he's learning each week to do better things. So uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, you also don't forget our uh, Patreon page, patreon.com slash baseball talk. You can go and contribute to the show and become a supporter from there. And, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it helps us uh, really to uh, do some things better and, and provide a better product for you. Yes, it does. And we've always been talking about maybe a spring training trip. So we get enough people on board and we have our listeners out there. 
we could do it folks you could uh yeah help us um uh, to fray some of the costs of putting the better show together you know something on the scene so to speak patreon.com forward slash baseball talk and there you can join from three different levels just like our uh, site at anchor so check us out there spread some love to the program and uh, subscribe to the show radio <laughs> do it today <laughs> well some people have been doing card collecting gary and i know i've been carrying some stories here each week on card collecting with target and walmart pulling their cards from the shelves recently uh within the last month there's been an opportunity for the old mom and pop stores to uh to come back into business and uh in case you missed our our last podcast or two uh, there was stories circulating around how literally you know hordes of people were going into all the targets all the walmarts because those sh uh, shops have disappeared the mom and pop collecting coin mm -hmm. shops they don't exist anymore uh, by and large but slowly but surely uh, around where i live there's a collector store opened up again uh, they're having fun events and they can use Facebook online to do some of their auctions and um, demonstrations. So, you know, years ago, these shops would have given a left arm to, to do that, have the reach to go on a site like Facebook and, you know, broadcast, hey, this is what we're doing down here, you know, to get people in. But um, so Target out of that they didn't want hordes of people swarming the store just for the cards and they were clearing the shelves off gary then it wasn't just a case of going in there looking at cards and things they were just buying up every card <laughs> literally sports yeah. card that was on the shelf so a hot hobby is now uh spawning us back to the good old days with the uh mom and pop local store so Check it out in your neighborhood. Might be surprised to uh, see one's going to open up in your neighborhood soon. I, I think baseball has to go, or or the cards companies, I should say, they should go back to the old wax packs. You know, I, I don't even, not even sure they sell them anymore. Everything is in bulk now. Um, there's a there's a fellow I, I watch on YouTube that uh, is big on the cards and. Uh, he, he, you know, he spends like thousands of dollars and, and, uh, trades and sells and whatnot. But, um, as you say, they were buying everything in sight and in, in Target and Walmart, they put together these special packages, they're the official card, their tops and their panini and their whatever still other brands are still around. Um, um, but they're they're bigger packs they're 48 card packs where they're buy and and these guys will buy cartons of this stuff and i think now um the last time i watched the video was a few weeks ago but um they've gotten to the point where now you have to go to the a counter and sales are limited to uh, i don't know what what two boxes or something um because it was it was getting so crazy and there'd be fights and everything else. Uh, but this is good that it's getting back to the old hobby store. We used to get them at a candy store. I don't know if people even know what a candy store is nowadays. Uh, a candy store used to be a store where you went in and you bought, uh, in some instances, they would have loose penny candy in the back or they'd have a rack of candy. Uh, and it would be a, they'd have a soda fountain there. You could get ice cream sundaes or you could get a, a, an a cream here in New York, or you could get a, uh, an old fashioned Coke with the salsa and the water and, uh, and the syrup. And they mixed it right in front of you. Um, and, uh, they sold newspapers and they sold little, maybe little notch here and there. 
and they would sell the latest trading cards. You'd have baseball and football. And uh, I remember movies. They would have um, or TV series that were big. The uh, James Bond movies. Uh, they'd have a, a, a set of cards that they would put out. One of the card companies. And you would get it. And on the back was a puzzle piece. It'd be a piece, a scene from the movie on the front, the back was a puzzle piece. And you'd put it all together for the big puzzle. You know, it was usually the logo of the movie or something. Uh, or TV series. They had TV series cards. The man from Uncle, I remember. Uh, um, gee, what else? Uh, well, mine's drawing a blank now. But they, they would have sets of cards. Yeah. And um, and it, all in this little, uh, you know, candy store we used to call it. And I don't know if what they call them in Philly or, or in Jersey, uh, but uh, we used to call them candy stores. And, and um, you know, and, and you get a cold soda or, or something like that. All of those kind of stores are gone now. Yeah. Um, it, it was sto- a candy store. Let me see. It was kind of a shrunken down Seven Eleven without all the extras. That's right. that's one way to put it. Uh, and no alcohol and no food. So uh, you, you know, yeah, you know, pretty fun place to go as a youngster. It was a hangout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a hangout. A kid. There was two of them went by my grandma school, and and uh, you know one was really tiny. It was like four seats on a, on a, on a, you know, he had a, a counter and uh, he, uh, he had like a marble uh, top to it. In those days, they had the old marble tops, you know, mm-hmm. easy to clean and everything. And he had like four seats and, and very narrow. And, uh, you know, his big, he was closed by usually four o'clock in the afternoon because when school let out, uh, he would be busy and uh, he, four o'clock, four thirty, whatever. He would be closed because he would do no business at night. Uh, you know, some of them stayed open late. The one, the one around the block from him would stay open late and uh, he would have the, the evening edition of the paper. Some of them yeah. used to be an evening in edition of the paper of the daily news. And all of the papers used to come out like 10 o'clock and, uh, believe it or not, people would walk to the store. Yeah, boy, I'm really showing my age now. They walk to the st- <laughs> they walk to the store. Maybe walk their dog, and that would be part of their routine. They would walk by the store. The truck would come by, throw the the papers off. The the owner of the store would come out and cut the uh, the uh, rope that was Uh-oh. or the string. The bundle that was around the, the thing and um and start selling papers and that would be the late evening early morning edition uh of the paper and then it was an early morning edition too that came out like it's five o'clock or something wow uh, people don't remember this stuff uh yeah <laughs> yeah you know, as years uh, go on in this connected world we're we're so connected. I think that's the problem. And I think I mentioned this before. I was in a newsroom years ago when they printed newspapers still. Right. And there was a little right. teletype in the corner and it constantly rattled off stories. And that's what the internet reminds me of today because it's mm-hmm. constantly being updated with stories depending on where you go. Twitter, Facebook, you're getting a feed of you know, it could be 90% malarkey, uh, 10% yeah. <laughs> worth something. But that ticker tape was the same way. And it was no graphics. It was just a typewriter that continuously pumped out stories. So, you know, it wasn't always in a connected world. Uh, and our younger listeners that listen to the show, they, they can't fathom this. That You know, if they want to know something, they go right on the Internet. The whole world is on the internet, but before it didn't exist. So, yeah, you had to wait, or or you heard about it maybe on radio or or television. It was a less um, stressful world for sure years ago. Yes, but to get a fleshed out story, it was usually the next day where where the reporters were reporters in those days, and 
they would do their homework. They would, you know, track down the story and uh, find out. Not like today when they put rumors on, uh, you know, and baseballs, uh, you know, no, the baseball writers put rumors about trades all the time. And sometimes it's just a, a whisper, you know, and it never comes to pass. But um, it's, it's, it's a different competition now. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I miss the good old days. And, you know, I like technology as much as the next guy, but it was, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you see, do you ever go back to your old neighborhood and, and find <laughs> out, oh my God, sure. how did I live here? It's so crowded now. That's the thing I, I find when I go back. It, it is just so dense. Well, you know, I, doesn't... I remember the days where you had a phone and the phone rang at home and it was connected to the wall or you had it on a desk. <laughs> you picked it up. You didn't know who it was. There was a little suspense there. You didn't have a little device in your hand to say, you know, Joe Schmo calling. You said, hello, yeah. how are you? It taught you a little thing about social <laughs> communications. Nowadays, they look at a screen and they don't want to talk to you. You just click a button. But in the old days, you had to pick it up. How true, how true. <laughs> but, um, you actually, you actually used to have to get up to change the TV station. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't have a million channels of no. gun smoke. TV and you know, you, <laughs> you had, no, we had five. We, we have five uh, VHF stations. Uh, you had two where I was in New. I grew up in Queens, New York. We had uh, Channel Two, Channel Four, Channel Five, Channels Seven and Nine and Eleven, and they they were like Nine, Eleven, and Five were like the minor stations. Two, four, and seven. Well, the ABC, CBS, and NBC. Uh, and then you would get Channel 13, which was a, uh, still is the, the uh, public station, but it was on, uh, 13 was was on VHF, what they called VHF. And then you could get other stations on UHF, but that was like, if you could get a station in the station on UHF, it was like, whoa. That was like, you know, another world you were tuning into, you know, like satellite um, TV. Yeah. And, and most of the stations on the UHF anyway, were in Spanish. So, uh, you didn't know what the heck was going on, but if you could tune it in, you know, you tune it in, uh, people had certain antennas and, uh, oh yes, we didn't have cable. We had what they called rabbit ears, bunny ears or uh, that that would go on the back of the set, and you did just this. Uh, to See get that, kids? Just... No, no cable. Right. No. <laughs> no cable, and uh, uh, or you had a, you had a wire that went up to the roof to a big antenna if if you were fortunate. Yeah, but uh, and we listened to a lot of radio in those days. Now I can't listen anymore. I don't know what it is. It's I've become too acclimated to the the new. But, you know, the new uh, I got stuff. I got the audio package uh, for MLB this year, um, and I enjoy it. It's it's nice. Mm -hmm. And I've listened to hockey online and things like that. One thing I found out that it's super delayed on certain channels. You know, a friend would text, uh -huh, yeah. yeah, you know, here's the score. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. they haven't scored yet where I've been listening. So, yeah. <laughs> One of those things, but uh, try it sometime. Listen to a game on the radio or online uh, with the audio. But, Gary, before we forget and get out of here without mentioning it, let's go through the standings real quick. Uh, National League first this time. We're usually always starting off with the American League. I don't know why, but we're <laughs> National League guys. <laughs> Take it well, away. you know. The NL East, Rich, we've got uh, my New York Mets. Or, uh, uh, I wish I had a cut of them. Uh, 32 and 24, holding a four-game lead over your Philadelphia Phillies there who are at the 500 mark. And the Mets are playing uh, good baseball. And, 
you know what? They're doing what they have to do. They're playing exceptionally well at home, 17 and 5, 15 and 19 on the road. They they easily like to say, uh, what is it? You pay play 500 on the road and 750 at home. Well, um, I think they're a little bit better than that at home and, and away they're under 500, but uh, holding on to a four game lead in their division. Of course they have, a, they have played the least games, I believe in baseball uh, due to the pandemic, the, the first week month, the first series, if you remember, got canceled and they've had a ton of rain out. So they'll have a lot of double plays going uh, double headers going uh, as the season progresses, but they're still holding in there now. And if they can get past this stretch with injuries, um, should be in good shape when the, the tough part of the schedule comes up. But uh, as I said, four over Philly uh, hanging in there, six over Atlanta, seven over Miami, eight and a half over Washington. And in the central, we got the Cubbies and the Brewers, the surprising Brewers, uh, both are tied for uh, first place over the 500 uh, St. Louis Cardinals, who are five games back. Cincinnati uh, is also five games back. They're at 500. And uh, Pittsburgh in a rebuilding year, obviously, is at 13 and a half. And uh, they are out of it. Uh. And then we come to the West Coast, Rich. And San Francisco holds a two-game lead over the L.A. Dodgers and a four-game lead over San Diego Padres. Uh, and, and Colorado and Arizona bring up the rear at 15 and a half and 20 and a half. So, um, Rich, the uh, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, the road to the World Series is going to have to go through California one way or the other. Yeah, numbers are written here. It's the most crucial three digits on this whole thing. And I'm not sure if my mouse is circling this or not on our YouTube feed, but the differential on run score is what I'm looking at. The Giants, the mm -hmm. Dodgers, and the Padres. Uh, 74 for the San Francisco Giants, plus 89 for the Dodgers, and plus 63 for the Padres, the highest run differential totals in the major leagues. As you said, Gary, it's going to go be a road through California to get anywhere. Um, World and series included. Yeah, because right now the uh, wild card, if the season ended, the wild card, I believe would be the Dodgers and San Diego Padres. And of course the giants would win their division. So um, unless they you know, get knocked off in, in one of the thing, in one of the series there, uh, it's, you're going to have to play out on a coast, some games to get to the world series. So, uh, these teams can't let up That's How about that American cool. league, rich. Yeah. The American league, we're looking at AL East Tampa Bay, still holding a 41 and 24 record, uh, winners of their last two. 78 run differential plus 78. So that's, that's California numbers there. Uh, Boston in second place in American league East plus 43. So they're not doing too bad either. Toronto keeping pace with them and the Yankees still keeping in pace. So I think one of the most exciting um, divisions besides the NL West would be the AL East right now. Everybody's bunched up still. Uh, skipping over to the AL Central, we have the Chicago White Sox with a great record, seven and three in their last ten. Won their three in a row, playing Detroit today as well. They're, Look at that differential! Yeah, top in all of baseball, plus one hundred three, oh. twenty five and eleven at home. And as you said, there's that almost five hundred record on the road for them. So Cleveland, four and a half games out, still over 500 record uh, winning percentage there. Um, and out West, it's the Oakland A's with a nice lead on the Houston Astros, although that lead seems like it's getting a little shorter. Yeah, two games. Um, 
Uh, look, the Angels are still in it. Seattle's still in it. Uh, you know, uh, they're not that bad off eight and six and eight games out. Angels at 500. But uh, those two teams are pretty good. They're real good, Oakland and Houston. So, uh, and the White Sox, just amazing. You know, La Russa, it amazes me how um, we see it all the time, how a, a good manager, you know, nobody was picking Cleveland either. Cleveland wasn't going to be there. They got rid of Lindor. They got rid, you know, they lost Bauer a couple of years ago. Uh, they, they got rid of Carrasco. And here they are, right in the middle of a race, four and a half games back and over 500. So uh, kudos to those guys. They're terrific managers. And, um, you know, it's funny. A couple of weeks ago, remember we did the story on La Russa? Was he losing the team? They were having all kinds of internal problems. And uh, obviously they've righted the ship and, and got things going in the right direction because they're holding, uh, you know, a, they may have uh, what the second, the third best record in baseball. So uh, good on them. Yeah, Larissa is still in charge out there in yep. Chicago. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens as we get towards the hot stove. We'll be starting to talk about that, I'm sure, uh, right around Father's Day, probably, and the weeks right after that, as we get to some sort of trade deadline here. And I'll have to read up on that because I know they're changing that almost daily. <laughs> it used to be August 1st. So I, I <laughs> yeah, I don't even, I don't know what year, uh, what year it is. <laughs> I know what year it is. I don't know what they're doing this year. Uh, it, it, like uh, the draft used to be uh, around this time, maybe a couple of, maybe another week or so. And now I don't know when that is. Uh, it's all different now, so we just have to wait and see. Yep, we're going to have to read up on it, check it out for you as we're doing the show. And uh, Gary, I just have one little quick story here that I have written down here. Um, 29-year-old Cubs rookie has set a record. His name is Patrick Wisdom, and he's been playing some third base for the Cubs. He's hit eight home runs in 10 games. Wow. Talk about a, uh, a welcome to the big leagues to somebody that may not have made it being 29 years old, getting to the big game and, uh, you know, making his self known, uh, great for Patrick wisdom there. And, uh, kind of makes me want to tune into a little cubby cubby ball to see uh, how he's doing. Uh, well, They'll be coming into uh, City Field this week, so uh, you can check out some, uh, you know, Mets uh, Cubbies action. Four games Monday to Thursday, so if you want to watch Cubbies, that's where they'll be. Right. Um, pretty incredible, though, you know, uh, eight home runs in ten games. That's yeah, yeah, it's uh, out outstanding. Uh, I did. I've got. Mm -hmm. I've got some dates here. Uh, the MLB draft will be July 11th to the 13th. Um, the trade deadline will be July 30th at 4 p.m. Okay, perfect. So we got um, those those dates in in hand for you there. July 30th at 4 <laughs> p.m. It's going to be a. I think there's going to be a lot of action this year. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, it'll be interesting. There's a lot of teams still uh, in it, so you know there's gonna be a lot of buyers. Um, some of the sellers are gonna gonna have a chance if they're smart and can do their business. Arizona, Colorado, uh, you know, um, uh, maybe Detroit. Though they're in a rebuilding state, so they may not. The Pirates might have a couple of guys. I don't know. Um, it, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, what the swaps are going to do. We, I tell you, we may see some of the fairest swaps this year. Maybe. <laughs> right, well, uh, you know, uh, being at a team may need something and the other team has it. And, and you know, um uh, 
Mets will be looking for starting pitting pitching probably. Um, yeah, they're but, definitely going to be buyers. Yeah, they'll be buyers. They'll be looking for some, probably one one more starter, uh, unless uh, they can get the uh, uh, one of the young guys uh, straightened out. Uh, uh, Peterson is uh, the guy. He's been struggling lately. Um, but I'm sure the Phillies will be looking for st- everybody will be looking for starting pitching probably and bullpen help, right? Yep. They're going to need it. The Phillies are, although they have three walk-off wins in a row, three game winning streak. They're all walk-offs. So, uh, wow. Watch out. Watch out. That's the way to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We appreciate everybody joining us for this show next week. I'll do some stats on the show from our listeners. We'll see where you're listening from that sort of thing. I know people enjoy that. Uh, If you want to send an email to me or Gary, it's rich at baseball talk radio or Gary at baseball talk radio.com. We're there for you. If you have a topic, um, something you want to talk about, send us an email and Gary, we got a big show coming up next week. Yeah. We're going to have a round table with the, uh, uh, boys from baseball and barbecue. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that in the can this week. Uh, I know you're going to have your shot, uh, your second vaccine shot. So if everything goes well, we'll be uh, recording that. And, uh, hopefully we're all, Keeping our fingers crossed for you, Rich. Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. it's going to be a great round table. If you have any topics yep. you want us to uh, talk about, please send us that email. You can even get us on Twitter, send us a message. Gary's over at Mets Musings GM. I'm at Fighting Phillies. That's without a G, F I G H T I N Phillies. That's my Twitter handle. You can send me a, a message through there. We'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for listening to this program, though. Yes, and we'll see you next time on another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show.